everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Audio Tools Explained. This week, we're going to be going into something in the mastering and mixing community referred to as LUFS. LUFS stands for Loudness Unit Full Scale, and it is similar to decibels in the sense that it is used to measure how loud your track or your music or your audio in general sounds. Now, some of you may be wondering, why does this matter? Uh, everyone nowadays uses decibels, don't they? Well, you'd be half correct. Nowadays, most mixing and mastering is done to LUFS. However, decibels is still referenced in a lot of mixing and mastering in pretty much anything that has audio in it. Now, why use LUFS as your primary reference instead of decibels? Now, the main reason for this is that whereas decibels is used to measure the loudness in terms of how strong the electrical signal is when it goes to your speakers or how strong the digital signal is going through your processor, a LUFS is based off of the human ear. It's based off of how loud it sounds when it comes out of your balance system and hits your ears. This makes it a little more accurate and a little more dependable than the standard decibel mixing and mastering techniques that uh, would be used way back in the day. Not only that, but the majority of platforms nowadays will have an algorithm that detects the general LUFS of your song when you upload it or of your media and will automatically adjust it to fit certain program settings on their platform. So it's a very, very useful thing to know because if you go through all the trouble of mixing and mastering your audio for your music, for your movie, for your video game, whatever you're working on, and you go up to put a video or a song up on a platform such as YouTube or SoundCloud, it's very important to know that they're going to be changing your audio and making it match their LUF standard. Because if you know that, then you can manually go into your mastering chain and adjust the loudness of your track to fit that so that they don't accidentally compress your audio or boost it a whole bunch or just generally screw around with that careful, careful mix and master you put together for your project. Now, there are a lot of programs out there you can use to measure loudness. Now, there are a lot of plugins or programs out there that you can buy and download, some of them for free, that you can use to measure the LUFS of your track or of your media before you export it and put it up wherever you're going to put it up. There's a couple plugins on a website called waves.com, which is a company that specializes in selling audio plugins. And then there's also this Yulian loudness meter, which is the one I have pulled up right in front of me right now, which is free and works just as good as any other paid plugin. It does have a paid version, uh, which has some extra features, but you really only need the free version. Well, okay, you'll say, I'll, I'll download this loudness meter and I'll hook it up, but how do I know what to mix and master to? Well, there's actually a lot of information on the, on the web that you can go out and find uh, that will have the LUFS ratings of certain platforms such as YouTube, SoundCloud, iTunes, Apple Music, etc. Uh, listed for you. Uh, for example, I have a page up in front of me right now that has this information. Now, as you can see, there are a few that can get quite loud, such as uh, CD and Amazon Music, which go up to minus nine. And there's a few that are a little quieter, such as Apple Podcasts and Apple Music, which are uh, ba based around minus 16. And what a lot of engineers or producers will do is they'll actually tailor uh, different mixes for these different platforms, or they'll make one or two mixes that are of slightly different loudness that they can spread across each to get the best result per platform. Generally, a safe volume to mix for would be around minus 13 if you only have the time or energy to put in for one mix. However, as you can see, that's only really uh, good if you're uploading to places such as SoundCloud, YouTube, Amazon Music, and Spotify. If you want to broaden your horizons a little bit, you might consider making another mix at around minus 16 to cover Apple Music and Apple's platforms. And you might also consider making one that's louder that goes all the way up to minus nine for platforms such as Amazon Music or CD or Club Play. However, generally you'll have to go through a lot of compression or a lot of extra mixing steps to hit this much louder volume as uh, LUFs such as minus six, minus eight, minus nine can be a lot harder to hit without a lot of clipping on your track. So you'd have to put on a lot more compression. However, generally a good LUFs to mix to if you only want to put out one mix is around minus 13. You're hitting the sweet spot on a lot of platforms or you're very, very close to it. So your mix won't be generally messed around with or boosted or compressed. 
and on other places such as Apple Music, it'll only be be compressed uh, a minimal amount, uh, a few dB, to get it down to that minus 16 point. And on platforms where it has to be boosted, some platforms will boost it when you upload it to match their luffs. However, you do have to be careful because some platforms won't, and then your music will be a lot quieter than everything else. However, it's still generally safe to upload at minus 13 because that's not a lot quieter than minus nine. It's only a little noticeably quieter. And now comes the question of how do you use plugins such as the Yulian loudness meter to mix and master your track in a way that makes sure it's hitting those standards for upload. Now the easiest way to do it is to just go through your regular mixing and mastering steps, put on your EQs, put on your compressors, put on your effects, anything and everything that you want to get your mix where you want it to be before you start uh, turning the volume up with your limiter. To show an example of this, I have a track actually uploaded on page that I wrote out for my next upcoming album. And I have my mastering chain here disabled. And I'm just going to enable it all that now. And we'll uh, leave these uh, limiters that I have here disabled. Uh, and we'll look at this Yulene and we'll see where my loudness is at uh, for this track. So as you can see, as we went from the quiet to the not so quiet parts of that track, uh, the loudest integrated luffs that we got, which is sort of your long term of your entire audio piece that you're examining, only got up to around minus 22, which is very, very quiet if you're putting it on any platform. You definitely want it louder than that. This is, of course, before I put the limiters in. If you're mastering to dBs to decibels in your DAW, you will generally get close to uh, a LUFS rating for uploading to multiple platforms. However, it's still better to get that just little bit more accuracy, get as much accuracy as you can so that your music is at its top form when you're uploading it. Now, we'll explore a couple of these settings here before we go in and add on those limiters. I already mentioned the integrated LUFS, which you can see on the second down here. And as I said, that's sort of like your long-term rating for your, the entire piece of audio you've been examining. You also have short-term, which a lot of uh, loudness meters will tell you, which is sort of how loud it is at that moment. And it can vary a lot faster than the integrated one. Think of the short term as current and integrated as average. It's a lot of easier way to think about it. You also have the loudness range, which is the range from which uh, your quietest point of your track uh, to your loudest point of your track is. Currently, it's sitting a little large for me, so I'll have to work on that. Um, a lot of friends of mine will t have uh, often told me that generally you want a dynamic range of maybe around 10, but you don't want your dynamic range to be extremely loud or parts of your track will just be inaudible. You don't want your loudness range to be, say, up in 15 or 20. That's a little ridiculous and your music won't really translate well to a lot of platforms. It also shows you settings such as dynamic range and average dynamics, which help you balance out your track a little more. You also have momentary and short term measurements for your luffs at the bottom here and a true peak for uh, measuring the peak of the decibels of your track, which is very useful because you can use that to compare to other bits of your music. You can compare your lefts to your dBs all in the same plugin. Most loudness meters will have this in them as well. So as I said, we're at about minus 22 lefts, which is about nine or, or, or eight or nine short of where we want to be. We want to be around minus 13 for one of our mixes. So we're going to turn these limiters on and that'll put us a lot closer, if not a little above where we need to be.
As you can see, my short term grew as it got louder and louder and went into that louder section until my integrated was around minus 13. This is generally what you want to see when you hit the loudest. Loud, <laughs> this is generally what you want to see when you hit the loudest part of your track because uh, you don't want the loudest part of your track to overcompensate for the quietest part of your track, and that has a lot to do with the loudness range or the dynamic range, which you can see just below the integrated luffs. And now you can see how it'll actually be a little difficult to hit those higher uh, luffs ratings, such as eight or nine, uh, as I'm already triggering a bit of my true peak max here at zero. And that's where my limiters are actually kicking in and ducking down some transients for me that are just maybe half a dB or a dB over the limit of where uh, the system will be able to handle it. Of course, you want to mitigate this as much as possible with compression, proper mixing techniques, volume balancing, etc., etc. However, at some point in your track, you're probably just going to have a little bit of limiting happening anyway, around a dB, half a dB, maybe a dB and a half. And this will help put your track uh, as loud as it needs to be to hit some of these luffs ratings. And now that you have your track at this proper volume and you're confident with your mix, you feel your track is ready and raring to go for its next release. All you have to do is export it to the proper uh, format, upload it to your favorite platform and you're ready to go. So I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you found it informative. We're going to be only doing a few more audio tools explained in this series as we're kind of running out of plugins to, to walk you through. Uh, so if you have any plugins that you want to know more about or effects you want to know more about or processing techniques, leave them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. If you have any uh, feedback or questions, leave them below as well. And if you feel like I missed something, comment it below so that others can share in the knowledge. We're all about learning here. Uh, I will see you guys next week. I hope you found this useful and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye.